Welcome back to my latest video. This morning I woke up and I saw there was a new version of Next.js, Next.js version 13.3. And honestly, I am super excited to see one, they're making progress on the app directory. But the other thing I saw that I got also really excited about is that they implemented the OG image generator that they built at Vercel directly into Next.js. And the cool thing about it is if we look at their docs, they say dynamic open graph images. Yes, you can generate dynamic OG images, but you can generate any image. And that's actually what makes this super useful in my opinion. So in today's video, I again want to show you how you can create these dynamic OG images. But let me tell you, it will be a lot easier than it used to be when you needed to do everything manually. So the first thing I want to show is a very, very simple OG image where we just pull data, in this case from GitHub, like we also built in the previous video. But next to that, I also want to show you this second image. And in this second image, what I'm actually doing is I'm generating some sort of portfolio image. So the screenshot you see here positioned in this very badly designed iPhone. I made it myself uh, because I didn't want to use any copyrighted material. But what you're seeing here is this image is loaded into uh, like a placeholder image and we put text on top of it. And then this can be something that you dynamically use within your website. So if there is a CMS behind this, the only thing you need to do is you would upload a screenshot of your work, something you made. Of course, it needs to be a specific width and height so it will fit. But apart from that, you don't need a designer to add the iPhone around it with a nice shadow, add text on top of it and things like that. These are things that now can simply be done with Next.js. And I think that is super powerful. So let me show you right away how you can make this. So to get us started, what I did already is I created a new Next.js app and you can simply do that by running npx create next app like you can find in their documentation as well. And after you've done that, you are ready to go. If we take a quick look at their release notes and click on the dynamic open graph images, we see that they now have added a new class image response to the next server package. And this is actually what we are going to use. So first I want to start by making this GitHub image because this is an OG image and that is something that's really close to what the Vercel team actually created this for. In next example, they decided to use the app directory to render this image. For now, I actually want to show you that even without the app directory, you can still use this today. So for that, I did not create a next app with an app directory and we are going to go into pages API and in there we are going to create a file called og.tsx. In here, we're gonna export default a function called handler. And that function in a second will render our image. One thing that's important for this image response to work is that we need to specify that this is an edge function. So that means that we need to export a cons config as well. And in there, we're gonna say runtime edge. This then will next tell that this is an edge runtime function and that will enable this image to work. Because as of right now, as you can also see in their documentation, it's only working as an edge runtime and it's not working in regular node. And now we have this handler function and specified that it's an edge runtime. The only thing we need to do to render an image is return new image response where we import this image response from next server. And then inside this new image response, we can simply render JSX. So we can, for example, render hello world. If we now go ahead and run our dev server by running npm run dev, we go to localhost 3000, 3001 I see slash API slash OG. Then we already see that an image appeared. And now we have this image, we can just add some CSS styling to it. And absolutely read the documentation because there's a few limitations. One is that it always needs to be display flex, like I also explained in my older video, linked up here. Um, 
but it means that we can just add a style tag on here and then add display flex. And for example, align items, center and justify content, center. And then we're also gonna add a height of 100% and a width of 100% as well. And if we do that and then refresh the image, we see that everything gets centered. So with just some basic CSS, we can now manipulate this image. And the only thing we needed to do is import this new image response. And you can imagine that from here, you can create anything. And you can even make this image dynamic with data that's coming from somewhere. And as soon as you have that, you have a URL that you can, in the case of OG images, just use as a meta tag to render these images. So in order to make these images dynamic, what I want to do is I want to load data from GitHub, but also not always render the same image, but have the ability to give an organization and the repository name as input to this image so we can dynamically generate whatever image we want. So for that, I'm going to create a directory called OG instead of a file. And in there, I'm going to add another di directory, which is dynamic, that we call org for organization. And then I'm going to rename this OG file to repo with square brackets. And these square brackets actually tell Next.js that this is a dynamic variable, a dynamic part of the URL. So I'm also going to pick up this repo and move that into the org directory. So that means that now we have URL API slash OG slash for example, frontend FYI slash rebuilding linear dot app. Frontend FYI is the organization and rebuilding linear dot app is the name of a repository. So if we again go to this URL, we see that we still get the same image. But now all of these dynamic paths are valid. And what we can now do is we can extract this dynamic part from the URL and then go to GitHub to fetch some data. This dynamic portion we can get from the request argument that is actually inserted into the request handler function. In here, we can create a new URL object where we input request.url. And the reason we do that, you ask? Let me show you. If we insert request.url, we get the URL that is currently requested. What you see here is that we have these dynamic parts but we also have two query parameters where we actually have a key value pair that maps to the dynamic parts of our URL. This is something Next does within their API routes to give you the option to quite easily extract these dynamic portions instead of needing to destructure the URL yourself, split on slashes, something like that, that's quite complicated. So what they do is they also add the query parameters that match the specific route. And from there, we can then create two new variables. We can create a variable const org equals URL dot search params dot get org. And the reason we cannot do this search params dot get is because we create a new URL object and that's why we needed this. So we can do exactly the same for the repo is URL dot search params dot get repo. And now we have two variables that we can use to send to GitHub to get some data. And in order to fetch this data, you already hear me say it, we can use fetch, just like you also would in the browser. So we can say const GitHub repo data equals fetch. And then you already see copilot autocomplete things equals fetch, and that goes to the GitHub API where we pass in the org as well as the repo. The await is still something that's underlined here, and that is because our function now needs to become asynchronous. And now we have this variable. We can simply render this variable, and then in there, there's a property, for example, full name. And this variable will then give us the full name of the repository we are requesting. And with this bit of code, we can now dynamically get data and render an image. I think it's super cool. So let's add a little bit of styling to also have it look a little bit okay, I think. So first, 
I'm gonna make this display flex again, which is a requirement because of the way this works. And then I'm also gonna give this specific font size of 80 pixels, line height 62, and we make it flex direction column and give this a padding of 0, 82 pixels. And then next to the repo name, I also want to add in the organization logo, which is also something we get from the API. We can render this by rendering a new image tag where the source is equal to the GitHub repo data dot owner dot avatar URL. And that already gives us an image. It's super large, but we render it just inside our own image. So if we just give it a width of 100 pixels as well as a height of 100 pixels, then stuff already becomes a little bit better. And perhaps we just add an inline style uh, where we, for example, could set a border radius of 100 pixels as well, which would make this rounded. And then we can, for example, still give it a margin bottom of 12 pixels just to have a little bit of spacing. And finally, we can, for example, still add the GitHub repo data dot stargazers count. And then we add a nice stargazer emoji right after it. And of course, we shouldn't add the typo in there. But then we already get the 62 stars, 62 people of you already star this repo. Thank you so much. We already get this stargazer count as well. Let's wrap this in a div as well, so it goes to its own line. And perhaps we can make this a little bit smaller by giving this a font size of 32 pixels, for example. And now you see, I get a white page. And the reason for that is because I right now have an error that says that a div needs to explicitly have display flex or display none. So that means that this div also needs to get display flex, which is just, you could say a limitation, but it's simply the way it currently works. And if we do that, we also see that the stargazers are there. Let me quickly make this a little bit better. And with that, we already have generated dynamic OG images. You can just take this URL and use this in your meta tag to generate dynamic images. You can also inject the title of your page, of course. You can do all, all of these crazy things. You can do whatever you want. And that is actually really nice. One thing that's still important to do is Next.js actually adds a wrapper around this fetch as well. So by default, it will cache this fetch call indefinitely, I believe. But what you can do is you can add a second argument in here that has a property next. And in there, you can add a revalidate. And that revalidate property is a number in seconds that determines how long it will cache the response of this fetch. So it will then not refetch it, which is good, of course, for speed. So we could, for example, say 10 minutes is fine because it doesn't change that often. And this is the duration during which it will not refresh this data. Next to the usage that Next is promoting, using this as OG images, I also want to show you how you can use this to make, for example, dynamic portfolio images. So for that, let's create a new file inside this API directory called OG portfolio slash project.tsx. So this creates a file called project in square brackets, which will be a dynamic part, and then OG portfolio as prefix. So in here again, we're gonna export default an async function called handler, like copilot already autocompletes. And next to that, of course, we should export the config again, where we set the runtime to edge. And of course, we should create a new image again, and in this image, we're going to add a new div that centers everything again. But next to that, I also prepared a small image called iPhone.png, where you actually see that I rendered an iPhone with a transparent portion. So this iPhone, I actually want to render inside my image. 
And I can do that by rendering again image source equals localhost 3001 slash iPhone.png. And I specify a width of 1200 and a height of 600. And it's good to note that I specify a full URL here. So if you're running in production, you also need to specify the full domain because Next requests this image over the internet. So it needs to have access to this image. As far as I know, you cannot use the relative paths in here. But if we now go to OG portfolio and then slash linear, for example, we see that I forgot to import the image response. But if we do that, we already see that we start having an image. One thing I still need to configure is adding a second argument in our next image response, where I also set a width of 1200 and a height of 600. So these two images match. And if we then refresh, we see that the white borders are gone. And then the only thing we still need to do is add in a dynamic part of the project, that screenshot. So for that dynamic part, I also added a directory called screenshots, where in there, I added a screenshot called linear. In this case, it's a screenshot of GitHub, but it could be whatever. And then we have to dynamically load this image. So if we again want to dynamically load something, we again create a new variable called URL, where we parse the request URL. And then we say const project equals URL search params dot get project. And this project again maps to the dynamic portion of the URL shown up here. And now we have this dynamic portion. We can generate another image that has a source that again goes to localhost 3001 slash screenshots slash project jpeg and in our case has a width of 420 pixels and then like in plain css we need to make this image position absolute so it's actually positioned behind the other image otherwise they would push each other out of the way of course so we can do that by adding style again and then position absolute and i also already found out what the right position for this image is but you could find that out with trial and error of course but let me quickly look to my right. We had a left of 390 pixels and a top of 157 pixels. And then if we refresh, we already see that it puts the image at the exact spot. So that way we are generating a dynamic image with a screenshot that's already in our website and that could come from a CMS, for example but we don't need a designer or anything like this anymore to just generate this. And next to that, we could of course go even further and we could add, for example, a nice title in here, which I already added now. And yeah, that could really bring this image to life and really make this a reusable thing, a hero maybe on your website or on your portfolio, something like that. And you could even, of course, make this a parameter as well. So next to these OG images, I really see a lot of use cases for rendering these dynamic images. I think it's just super powerful. And now it has become even simpler by only using this image response function. I really wanted to make another video about this, simply because I see there are so many use cases for this. So I hope that this is something that you also see the value of and especially now it's become this easy. So that will be all for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did, leave a comment if you used it anywhere, subscribe to my channel and also check out the link below for our Discord because this week I released a two week free trial. So instead of your money back, I'm actually giving you a two week free trial up front. So hopefully I will see you there as well. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.